Hello, welcome. Today I thought we'd view that portion of the layout that portrays the inner city. The older inner city is indeed that part of town that has remained steadfast amidst the many years of growth and development that has gone on around it. Perhaps somewhat obvious, but at the same time quite mysterious, is the history that explains the building's current presence in their current circumstance. The obvious part of history is that as cities continue to grow, businesses and industries do as well. But while that development might push out beyond the city proper, when one looks back to the days when city planning and formal zoning restrictions did not exist, it is easy to see how often this industrial development would actually take place in very close proximity to residential neighborhoods, sometimes completely encapsulating them. So, it certainly comes as no surprise when we see an old building of flats or apartments sitting just below some smokestack industry. There was a case in the early history of this town where an enterprising group of men built a manufactured gas plant very near an early fashionable neighborhood of well-to-do families called South Park. And while the neighborhood would see many a fine residence built around the elegant oval-shaped park, it would not be long before the gas plant soot would not only displease the residents, but would also encourage other industry to build in very close proximity. And while life continued for these well-to-do for some time, the neighborhood would eventually fall out of favor and the area would become somewhat depressed from what it had been. And so the mysterious part of history is wondering why or how some of these residential neighborhoods would survive. And in a time when the so-called little guy could do little to stop the so-called march of progress, the reasons for whether their neighborhoods would continue to survive or face the wrecking ball would become, I suppose, simply a pragmatic exercise to all concerned. For instance, if the lot that a building might rest upon, perhaps by its lack of size or poor location, had no appealing quality to anyone interested in redeveloping it, then, well, of course, the lot and its building would simply continue to stand. I suppose if the landlord figured lower rents would still justify keeping the building, he or she would probably maintain the status quo. But if the contrary were true, the landlord might start looking for an arsonist, <laughs> and then the lot might become a parking lot. But you can see what I'm getting at. It's always drawn my curiosity whenever I've seen a vacant lot. And though today we might see a rather run-down group of buildings, we do remember when these neighborhoods provided good homes and lives for many a family. So, whether the front door to your apartment or flat was next to the neighborhood shoe sign stand or at the back of the building, it, nonetheless, was never far from the rest of your good neighbors. Certainly, among the most charming features of these neighborhoods were the small corner stores that seemed to be on every corner. Long before the age of supermarkets and DoorDash or Grubhub, these corner stores were vital to their communities. Certainly not just convenience stores like 7-Eleven. They offered almost everything a household would need, from meat and potatoes to veggies and fruit, from milk and butter to eggs and bacon with most of them, if not all, of course, offering a very wide assortment of liquor. But perhaps the most intriguing thing about them was their out-on-the-sidewalk displays of fruits and vegetables. Right out front, under the awnings, would be crates and crates of produce. And while I'm sure it happened, still, it never seemed that anyone would just walk away with an armful of it. Of course, living in the inner city meant that you would be among many other people. And while this ain't for everyone, 
it did offer the opportunity to befriend many. And I believe, much like a small town, most everyone probably knew most everyone else. However, with everyone being in such close proximity, I'm sure there were always going to be some times that conflicts might arise. But that's why we have the cops, eh? But better yet, let's shake hands, head down to the corner bar, hoist a mug with each other. After all, tomorrow's another day. And besides, the 38 will be here soon enough to take you home out in the Richmond. Another necessary component of the old neighborhood was the other corner store, the corner drug store. These were special places, as well as filling all of those important prescriptions that the doctor wrote. It seemed like they always had everything else the household would need, from band-aids to dad's razors and mom's hairbrushes. But of course, the best thing of all was that chocolate malted you got at the soda fountain, right? Always seemed so strange, though, that they'd sell something so good like ice cream or a Coke, but then they'd also sell that awful-tasting cough medicine and cod liver oil. Seemed like they were trying to make you sick. But you could always count on old Pete and Mr. Kapatsky playing checkers behind the old rooming house down the way. Hopping off the 25 with my grandmother downtown, we always passed a building with what was, at least to me, a very mysterious sign. Odd Fellows Temple. Back then, I never knew what that was all about, and I never asked Grandma, because I couldn't imagine she'd know. But, as we made our way up to market, I couldn't help but wonder if any of these gents were members. But, at any rate, it would remain a mystery to me for many years. Many old parts of town would continue to stand through the ongoing march of time. I don't know if there was more a sense of permanence in years past compared with today's quicker pace to change, but I suppose there just didn't seem to have the same urgent need to tear down and rebuild like there is now. True, the old buildings, built in much earlier times, would begin to show their age and find different purposes in an age when many folks flocked to new tract homes out in the suburbs. But many would continue to stand, albeit in a bit less grandeur. Closer to downtown and all of the office buildings, you could still see some old rooming houses that were home to workers on the waterfront. The railroad would still set cars out back, but that didn't matter as no one needed the backyard anyway. And since the railroad didn't take up all the space between the buildings, people would avail themselves of some free parking, hopefully leaving clearance for the trains. Older hotels, no longer seeing the patronage of years past, would now rent rooms for a week or a month rather than for the overnight stay. And the tenants would now have to change their own sheets. Many would remain witness to their neighborhoods changing just below, leaving us to wonder how long they'd remain themselves. Finally, I'd mention one more essential member of our inner city. This would be the many diners and cafes that offered hot meals, or perhaps just a hot cup of coffee and a donut, or a piece of pie to anyone wishing a bite to eat. Beef stew or a bowl of chili probably sounded good on a wet wintry day, but you could probably get that tomorrow as well, no doubt. And whether it was home cooked or not, the local cafe's grub usually satisfied the ticket, especially if you were hungry just getting off of work. Here's a shot of the original Eagle Cafe that sat at the end of Powell Street down towards the Embarcadero. 
It was moved just across the road and hoisted on top of Pier 39, where it is today. Inspired by a small diner of the very same name that sat below Telegraph Hill, just behind the State Belt Roundhouse long ago, here you are invited in for a meal and a better time. Though, I'm sure FDR never had a cup of joe here. I'd bet his portrait is hung up behind the bar. And though we're reminded of those times that weren't as good, it's still good to see folks enjoying some time together at the counter. There were many little diners around town. Many were simple affairs, just a small building on a small lot that might have room to park your truck while you grab some lunch. Others sat among the stores of small business districts, but all of them were there to offer a bit better time in our inner city. <laughs>